Well, now let's go to uh, Sylvan Models. Uh, Claire uh, Gilbert is the owner of that company. And Bill Davis is going to be building this 1929 CBR boxcar kit in both HO and O scale. So, Bill, welcome. Okay, so let's see. I hit the, the share button. Is that what I do here? Yes. Okay, there we go there. Okay, now it's your new desktop. And, uh, by the way, that's a picture of my town in 1925. My God, you're an expert with this. <laughs> okay, I got, actually, I got to find my, my thing here. All right, here we go. And we want to go to full screen or slideshow. All right. We have all, all, all kind of stuff on it uh, later. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're going to be building a Sylvan model um, CN Canadian National 1929 single sheet box car. Uh, the Canadian National in 1929 through 1931, they had 9,653 of these cars built. Uh, they were built by three companies, the CC and F the NSC and Eastern car. These cars were 40 foot long with drug knot ends and Hutchins dry lading roofing. Uh, and they had either wood doors or steel doors. Interesting thing about the wood doors and the steel doors is that um, so only about 300 of the cars got the wood doors, the rest all got steel doors, or excuse me, about 3000 cars got that, and then the rest were all got steel doors. But the, the thing is, as they got shopped and rebuilt, these doors got interchanged between cars. So a car could come in with steel doors and go out with wood doors, <laughs> vice versa. So it was kind of like, you know, anything goes type of thing. Now, this is, uh, looks like pretty much a, uh, maybe a prototype photo of the thing, uh, a doors photo, I mean. Uh, note that it has um, K-brakes on it. And uh, these are Dol Dolman uh, two-level trucks. Uh, apparently, Canadian, Canadian railroads love those trucks. Um, I know there is a set made in O-scale. I don't know what's available in HO. If there is any like that available, somebody knows, let me know. And uh, this car here, you'll notice that uh, first, thing, first thing it has AB brakes on it. And then over here, you'll notice that it's much lower than the car next to it. I couldn't find dimensions as to interior height or any of that kind of stuff on this particular type of car, but it is obviously smaller than the steel car next to it. So a little history about O scale and HO scale. O scale was introduced by German, by German toy manufacturer Markman around 1900. It was seven millimeters. This made the track gauge correct for the common standard gauge around the world. When Oskio came to America, they didn't want to use metric. So they tried various scale sizes like 1764s to maintain the standard gauge of four foot eight and a half. It was difficult to say the least to deal with 1764s. So it was decided to settle on quarter inch as Oskio is as Oskio in America. That created a problem with the track gauge because now the one and a quarter inch gauge is five feet instead of four foot eight and a half. That compromise became standard for O scale to this day. However, fine scalers have decided to correct this through, met, through movements uh, like the quarter AAR in the 60s, which is today led by today's Proto 48. Personally, that's my, my choice. I would like to have the gauge be correct. I'd like to have the wheels have uh, not oversized flanges and other issues like that. So I'm willing to make the extra effort to get that kind of uh, detail level on my models. Uh, after World War I, HO was developed in Europe. It was designed to be half the size of O. The issue was smaller homes and what and smaller models to be being cheaper uh, thought about the development, thought about this development. Unlike O scale, when HO came to America, they retained the metric system. And so HO truly is half O because of the time, because at the time, O scale being seven millimeters. 
why Oskill didn't uh, want to stay with the metric system, I don't know. Why HO didn't go to eighth inch, <laughs> I don't know that either. So this is a kind of a picture of the gauges in O scale. Now the, the bottom four here is, the bottom four here is like ON3, which would be three foot gauge, ON30, which would be 30 inch gauge, ON2, which would be two inch, two foot gauge, <laughs> and ON18, which would be one foot six. But on the top here, you have traditional O scale, which is five feet. But next to it, below it is the four foot eight and a half. Now that's only a 16th of an inch less roughly. But, you know, you go all out to get as much detail and get things as correct as possible. But then you put oversized wheels with wrong gauge. So to, like I said, to me, that's just wrong. And so I won't do it. Now, here we have the O scale body for the uh, Selvin kit and the HO body. And in theory, the HO is half the size of the O scale, but in mass, the O scale kit is eight times bigger than the HO kit, HO body. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of difference in the detail level and the uh, options you have to uh, build in an O scale model as you close to an HO model. So what's in the box? Well, this was interesting. The uh, HO model had the body, had the underframe, roof walk, and two sets of doors. You had the wooden doors and the steel doors. These pieces were part of the underframe. These pieces here were part of the roof walk. Uh, I'm missing a door, a door bottom piece. These were part of the underframe here. These are titchy ladders. These are grab irons. I'm not quite sure why these are in here, but I'll figure it out. There are two different style brake wheels and a lot of little itty bitty parts. I'm not used to little itty bitty parts. So this is gonna be interesting to see how this all works out. The O scale kit is a little different in that this is the body, this is the frame. Now I did some modifications. We'll discuss that in a minute here. There's decals in both the HO and the O scale. Once again, you have the four doors. Uh, you have a piece to go on top of the uh, center sill to uh, make it look like a um, channel. You got the doors tracks. You've got the uh, the uh, brake where the brake comes. Through. Oh, no, no, we don't do that. Where the brakes come through uh, under the frame. Uh, over here is some uh, brake hardware, which I'm going to replace in my model, and some other small parts over here and some wire. But there was no uh, grab irons and some of the other things that in the HO kit. There were some things in the OSCO kit that weren't in the HO kit. So it's going to be kind of interesting to assemble these two models. Now, um, since I want to do P48, I'm going to use scale couplers. I'm not going to use KD couplers. So I don't have a KD coupler box. So I modified the end, cut the, cut the, um, center sill right even with the end of the body bolster. And then using two pieces of quarter inch channel, I uh, replaced the area where the coupler is gonna fit with channels on each side. And then inside here where the coupler will sit when we get ready to mount it. Now, these brass pieces here are protocraft and they are really cool. Um, you drill a hole, you put these two pieces on there and you've got this perfect system for apply, uh, attaching your trucks. Uh, I don't know if anything like that's available in HO, but in O scale, that's just an amazing piece of work that they've designed there. And they just press fit in a, about an eighth inch hole. No, about a quarter inch hole. So now weight. Weight's an interesting subject. Um, I don't believe in, in heavy weights on cars. Um, so the HO car, I mean, sure, the O scale car, I actually added a couple of washers just to get it up a little bit, but that made the car weigh without trucks and couplers, 12 ounces, almost 13 ounces. The HO uh, kit, a friend of mine loaned me a couple of, uh, uh, tape weights and the NMRA standard said that an HO car that was 40 feet long should be three foot, excuse me, three, uh, three, 
ounces, 3.8 ounces. That's what it was, 3.8 ounces. Uh, so the car right now without trucks and couplers is 2.8 ounces. I figure couplers and trucks will bring it up to the, the HO standard weight. Uh, the, the only problem with weighting things, I think is, you know, back in the day when we had lousy track and oversized wheels and all these other issues to deal with um, and poor rolling wheels and stuff like this, we needed a lot of weight in the cars. I don't feel that that's necessary. However, we have the issue of some models are made out of brass, some models made out of plastic, some models made out of resin. So you have to have some kind of standardization in there. So I try to keep things not super heavy, but heavy enough to track well. So I found three articles uh, on the subject of this car, and I will put these in the chat. I can figure out how to do that. Uh, Railroad Model Craftsman's November 2003 Essential Freight Cars Number no. 8 has an article concerning this, and also uh, it's, uh, the HO model is being built there by Ted, but it's not the Sylvan model, it's a different brand. Uh, O-Scale Resources, November, December, 2019. Uh, uh, Dan, is it Dan, uh, Jim? Yeah, Dan yeah, Darnan. Dan, yeah, Dan Darnan builds this car. And then there was a gentleman uh, in New England who had a website, uh, and he also assembled this car. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at for this, this time. Uh, next time, we'll deal with some plumbing underneath the, uh, uh, on the underframe of gluing the underframe into the body, and uh, we'll be doing some de detailing of the body. Uh, any questions? Bill, I really appreciate you doing this, both the, uh, and, and showing the difference between the HO and the O scale, I think is uh, really valuable for some modelers, particularly that may be trying to decide which scale they want to model in. Uh, so thanks so much for doing this. Well, I'm hoping that's what will come out of this whole, this whole series. And I guess I'm going a little bit myself. I mean, I've done HO modeling in the past and stuff like this, but it's never been uh, my forte to do that. I'm, uh, I, I got hooked up with O scale in the uh, early 70s uh, and uh, never looked back. <laughs> <laughs>